Britain's Foreign Secretary welcomed her rich world counterparts with a brass band and Covid-conscious fist bumps. The UK, the US, Canada, Germany, France, Italy, Japan, the G7 is a club of advanced economy democracies and their friends. And these meetings are a chance for them to affirm both what they're for and what they're against. We need to defend ourselves against the growing threats from hostile actors. And we need to come together strongly to stand up to aggressors who are seeking to limit uh, the bounds of freedom and democracy. Of all their perceived threats, Covid, China, Iran and more, it's that of Russia that is seen as the hottest issue. With Russian troops massed on the other side of the Ukrainian border, there's clear alarm from Western democracies about the possibility of an invasion. Well, what we have to do is deter Russia from taking that course of action. I've been very clear it would be a strategic mistake for Russia to do that. And what the G7 meeting this weekend that's taking place is about is about a show of unity between like-minded major economies. Liz Truss's rallying cry for what she calls the free world is that like-minded countries should step up, they should unify, they should stop their introspection and drift and push back against perceived aggressors Russia and China and they should do this using economics and technology. But Germany's Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline project with Russia is an example that true unity can be elusive. Germany's new Green Party Foreign Minister, Annalena Baerbock, is against it. Her Social Democrat boss, Chancellor Olaf Scholz, is for it. And Germany is not yet agreeing to threaten Russia, as the US and UK would like, with blocking Nord Stream 2 if it invades Ukraine. Uniting the free world is easier said than done. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Liverpool.